Hey friends, so if you have ever used an NPM workspaces based or PMPM or YARN workspaces based monorepo, I'm pretty sure you have come across a situation where you created one lib setup, but then you had to add another one and you just end up copy and pasting it, removing all the old stuff or unnecessary stuff, slightly adjusting names, package names, maybe things you install into it and then get going. But it's quite tedious and error prone actually. So let's learn how we can automate that. So I have here already a starting structure where I have a packages folder and a UI library. And it's a very simple one. It just here has a public export, has here one React component. In the package JSON, I have the name, I have the main entry points here, I have the build script. I'm using Zap for this. So you can see here the Zap config. And I'm also having here a TS config that is being used here by Zap. And that points to some more common base TS config, which has just some more common settings that I might want to reuse across various packages that I have in here. Now, in this specific case, I'm actually using PMPM workspaces here. You can see that by that PMPM workspace YAML file, but it's perfectly fine to also use NPM or YARN workspaces. It wouldn't matter in this case. So to, to build this project here, I could just run PMPM-R build and it would run recursively the builds for all the projects in this workspace. So in this case, I just have one and you can see now that this folder is being produced and the compiled output, basically our TypeScript is being compiled to, I, to JavaScript here. Now, if I want to create a second library, which is very often the case, I would have to go and now copy and paste this. So just go here, copy and paste, create a new one, potentially remove the files within it. Now, obviously here I don't have much files, so it would be pretty easy, but imagine a more real world project, you would have a couple of those. And so removing them, even maybe tinkering here with specific dependencies for that new app and removing all the old ones could be tedious. So I wanted to show you quickly how we could kind of automate this by leveraging Annex generators. Now as a first step, let's just add Annex here to this monorepo. So you can just run pmpm dlx Annex at latest in it. And so this now installs Annex, kind of ask a couple of questions like what scripts need to be cached and where the output folders are. And so we end up here with an annex dependency in our package JSON and also an annex JSON here, which defines things such as the cache operations or such a task pipeline, which defines, for instance, the case where it would run the builds of our dependent projects before running the build of our library itself. So for now, we can actually ignore this. And now that we have annex installed, we can also just run our commands as follows using the annex pipeline. So we could say run many, dash t build, and this will now run the builds of the projects that are in our workspace. But what we want to actually do is to automate this workspace and NX has the capability of running generators. Now to better understand this, if we go to annex.dev docs, there's an entry page there about why NX and further down, it is kind of an explanation of what the over architecture of NX looks like. So what we have done now in this PMPM workspace monorep is just install that NX package, which gives us the task running as we have seen. It also gives things like distribution and caching, but there's also a section about plugins, in particular, the dev kit that can be used to develop such plugins. Now, plugins are usually very technology specific. So there might be a plugin for React, for Angular, for Next.js, for Remix, that basically help you set up those projects in a very easy way by generating some of those parts. And that's actually the part that we're interested in. And then some other things such as like wrapping lower level build toolings by providing dedicated task runners, and things like automate migrations. But we are mostly focusing now on the generators part because we want to leverage that for our local workspace. And so there's a whole section about how to develop such plugins and how to can install them in a workspace or use them to automate your workspace. So definitely feel free to check out that types of docs, but we are going to now do that live here in this PMPM monorepo. So the first thing that I'm doing is installing the Annex plugin package because that provides the facilities to create such automation generators. So let me just run here pmpm add, add Annex plugin and I'm installing it as a dev dependency and also workspace wide at the root level package JSON because this is something that kind of impacts the entire workspace here. So once this is installed, we can now run pmpm annex list at annex plugin. And this will give us a list of so-called generators that this plugin already comes with because we don't want to set up the whole plugin system for ourselves, but we could rather just run a generator again to create, basically generate such a plugin. 
And so in this case, we are interested in this one specifically and later then in that generator, generator, which is kind of a weird combination to set up such a code scaffolding mechanism to then create our new package. So as mentioned, first of all, let's run the generation of such a new NX plugin here in this workspace. And so I'm running NX generate at NX plugin, plugin. And so it will ask me now, what is the name of the plugin that you want to create? And so in my case, let's just call this automation because this should kind of contain the automation facilities for our workspace here. So you can see here an output of what has been created, but you can also just go in here and you will see now we got a new kind of package inside the packages folder that is empty for now. It has a package JSON with just a name, but nothing really more in it. So the next step is to generate such a generator. And so again, I'm using NX generate, NX plugin generator, and let's call this react lib because we want to create a generator that scaffolds a new react library based on this model. So it will be fully custom to this workspace. So here it asks me in which project we want to add a generator. And obviously we want to add it in our automation project. And so here we get now such a generator set up. And that includes, first of all, such a generators JSON, which is leveraged by an X at runtime to find potential plugins that have generators installed and shipped as part of them. And so what a generators JSON does here is mostly identify the name of the generator, point to the actual implementation function that needs to be run when the generator is executed. It has a description and it has a schema file. So let's have a look at that schema file here. And this is basically simply a description, a JSON schema description of what your generator looks like. So what input it provides, what the type of those inputs are and what are required inputs. Moreover, it also has things like an X prompt. So if you don't provide it on your CLI, it would actually go and prompt you. Now we'll see these, and these are actually really useful because it allows to give the user more feedback about what it needs to provide. So without diving too much in the underlying mechanisms, let's actually look at the generator's TS file, which is the actual implementation. Now the high level, what you get there is just a function that is being exposed, and that is exactly the generator's function that is being run once this is being invoked. And it gets a tree object, which is, imagine there's a virtual representation of your file system where you can run operations against. And so this allows you to perform such things like dry runs and, and, and like simulations of what would actually be created at runtime. And then it has the options to add is actually our schema, which is basically the TypeScript definition of that schema JSON file. So let's have a look at what we are actually wanting to implement. So we want to implement an, a generator that creates a new library similar to this one whenever we invoke it. And so we can actually just go ahead and replace the things that are in this files folder here, because this is something that gets read by this generate files. As you can see here, it reads in that files folder and then generates that into the new library wherever we specify that path to be. So first of all, let's have a look at what we get here or have in our source folder of that UI library, which is our example project, basically. So we have the index.ts, which is just the point where we expose things. And so we have that here as well. Note we have that dot template, which is just a way to mark this as actually being a template file. Now here we could just say something like export your public components. And since this React library, we can also say something specific like export your public React components here. Right, so as a next step, then we would want to actually have the whole config part. So I don't think we necessarily need to create a sample component. I usually like it when there's less components around. So things like the package JSON would be something that we want to generate. So let me just copy that up. And so we have now our source, we have our package JSON. Let's suffix this with dot template. And here, for instance, we would want to get the name of the library already right. So this would be a template. And probably we also want to have a scope of the package. So let's actually add in here some template markers. And so this would be the scope. And here would be the name of the function, the name of the actual package. And similarly, we probably also want to provide here the description here of our package as well. So we obviously need to provide these, but that's something we can do in a second moment. Let's continue completing here our file setup here. And so what's missing now is the TS config, which doesn't really have any dynamic replacements here based on the name of our package. So it's pretty static and similar to the sub config here. And so let's paste those in as well. And we can leave them as is for now. So with that, we have all the necessary files to set up our simple package here. So now we need to go and actually provide these. 
So first of all, the name is something that already comes here from our schema JSON, so we have that already. Now we could go ahead and actually copy this for our description. So we just fill in here the description. We don't have here a default. And as the next prompt, we could say, what is the package about? So the user can provide that. I wouldn't say this is required. So we could by default just have it empty if it's not being provided, uh, which I think is fine. Now we need to make sure that these are being passed to our template here. And to do that, we can use here an option field that is passed to these generate files. The generate files is the one that takes here that files directory provides a couple of options such as like where it should be generated and we need to first adjust that as well. And then it will also go and pass in here this options field, which is here our type representation of our schema. And so this is that schema DTS file. And so we also need to make sure here that we have the description field marked as a string. Now for things such as the options field here that is being passed in by the user, you usually want to have it kind of pre-processed and adjusted. For instance, we want to have something like resolved options that here passes the options. But then for instance, for the name, there is a utility function that is exposed directly by the dev kit. So that's where most of the utility functions comes from in terms of developing NX extensions or NX plugins. And so we have here our name that we kind of process through that names function. And that gives a variety of different potential outputs and transformations of that, which could be a class name, constant name, which are very handy if you need it in the template or also the file name, which is actually pretty handy for something like actual file names, folder names, but also in this case for an NPM package name. And so next we need to make sure that we replace our normal options with this resolved options, such, they are, such that they are being passed to our generate files function here. So the, the description is already being passed in here and we can just leave it as is, but we also need that scope property, which we have used in our template here in the name of our package. And so that scope can be something that we either could ask the user to give, but it can be kind of annoying. So we could actually infer that from the package JSON at the root level of our monorepo. And so here we have quite a long one, but we could say here something like this is my org, or this could be the name of my monorepo in general. And we can leverage that as our scope for all the packages that live within that monorepo workspace. And so for instance, our UI package here should rather be named my org UI to make sure that it's kind of following this naming convention. So to read that, we can actually use a function again from the NX dev kit, which is called read JSON. And then here have something like const root or scope name. And that's exactly what we need. So we kind of need the name here from the package JSON at the root of our workspace. And so this would be the scope name. So with that, we are pretty far already. There are some generated utility functions that we don't really need for this specific setup. Now, one thing that we need to adjust though is the product root. Now, in this specific case, we could actually just go ahead and simplify our lives a bit and hard code this. And so say this is always going to be in the packages folder and probably we want to use here the resolved options dot name just to make sure that we also kind of suffix this or make sure that it kind of be resolved based on the file system naming conventions. So with that, we should be done. Let's actually go and try running this. To run such a generator, we can just refer it by the actual name that we have here in our package JSON. And so this is called automation. So we could just run pmpm nx generate or just g for short, and then say automation and call on the name of the generator, which in this case is custom lib, because that's the name that we actually gave our generator here. So to do a dry run, we can just pass dry run here. And this would now invoke direct our generator. So it asks properly what name we want to use for our library. So let's say my react lib. What is the package about? It is just a simple setup of a react library. And now you would see what it is going to generate. So here it would create a new folder here based on the name we provided with a package JSON has the source file, has the configs that we need. And so, so far it looks actually pretty good. So let's try this without actually the dry run. We can also pass the name directly. So I could say my react lib and give the description, a simple react library. And now here you can see in this packages folder, we got a new my react lib. It has properly set the name. It has set the description. 
We have our TS config, which should still be valid. We have our ZAP config, which we didn't really change, but just generate into this folder here. And we have the index.ts file where we just mentioned here, export your public React components. And so we could go ahead here and say, create a new hello world.tsx and just create here a simple React component. Now notice here, it doesn't recognize the TSX yet. And the reason is we actually need to run a PMPM install here. So it would install all the packages that this specific library here needs, which also includes things like React, React DOM, and so on. And so now you can see it properly recognizes it. Now, since this has already the build script as well, we can just run pmpm nx build, and the name of this library is myorg myreactlib, and it would just now build our application here. Now you can see there are some warnings because what happened here when we generated this setup automation is that here in the TS config base, some relative paths have been set and this is necessary for NX to automatically recognize this library and pre-build it for us and run it because this is written in TypeScript but NX immediately executes it without us having to do any pre-build step at all. And so to circumvent this warning, you can just set here the base URL and set it to dot as well as the root there to dot. And so if you rerun the build here of our React lib again, it just produces the proper output. And so you can see here it compiles just as we would expect. And so this generator was actually a pretty straightforward one as we didn't really customize a lot of the output here, but rather just copy and paste the files in here, replace a couple of things such as here and here that could be dynamic based on user input and that's it. But you could do a whole lot of different things here such as using some AST parser, looking at an existing library and for instance augmenting that library with some additional things. Let's say you have a library or an application in your monorepo repo and you want to add Prisma support. So you could generate that on top of that existing library rather than just always scaffolding new ones. So I hope this gave you some insight into how NX generators work and maybe it sparked even some ideas of how you could potentially leverage them in your own monorepo workspace. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.